I sent out a an email on Friday and I referenced some drills that I was doing with my sister who's pregnant and having back pain. And somebody asked, what, what are these drills? What are these drills? So let's go right into some of these drills. One of them that we're going to do today, I'm going to start out. My sister and I didn't do clearly because she was pregnant, but I love this one. It's called in yoga. It's called locust pose and it's really great at firing up the muscles in the back. So if you are in a place where you can stop and get on the floor, awesome. If you're not, bookmark this little video and come back to it later. Again, it's only going to be about 10, 12 minutes and it's going to be awesome because it's going to target all of the muscles responsible for supporting your back and it's going to help to strengthen them because guess what? If your transverse abdominals are strong and engaged, that can take 40% of the pressure off your low back. The less pressure that we have on the low back, the less pain we have to experience theoretically. So let's get going. Let's going to go ahead and get started on our bellies. The toes are out long. Your hands, let's go ahead and extend them down and by the sides. Your palms can be down or up. It doesn't really matter. There's no yoga police here. Now, make sure that you tilt the tailbone down. And when you do that, draw the belly button in. That's super important so you don't have low back pain. This is called locust pose. We're going to lift the legs and channel your inner little mermaid, if you will. Try to keep those feet together. When you let your legs play apart, keep holding it up. We're going to hold this for at least five counts. It can put your pressure in your low back. So lift that chest a little more. Let's do this one more breath. Now we're going to move straight into another version, bringing your hands in line with your chest. Keep lifting those feet up. Maybe you extend through the chest a little bit more. And now we're going to make it work the traps and the rhomboids. That's the upper back. So hands out wide to a T, forward, bring it back. T, forward, back. That's two. We're going for five. T, forward, three. T, forward, four. T, forward, five. Squeeze. Now we're going to look to the right for five, four, three, two, one. Look to the left for five, four, three, two, one. All right. Go ahead. Set it down. Shake it out. Maybe windshield wiper those legs. This is a quick video, so we're going to move right along. Fingertips in line with the chest, elbows squeezing the body. Go ahead, press the toes and the knees into the mat. Lift yourself up. Here we did a little bit of a chaturanga. So <clears throat> we're going to hang out here in plank for at least 15 counts. Maybe we'll get even 30 in. You can stay here on your knees or you can come up to your toes. The thing you want to think about is your booty's not up in the air. Keep that plank. Your gaze is forward. And your weight, you're going to push your heels back a lot. Feel how that engages your belly a whole bunch. Now try to push the shoulder blades away from each other. That's really going to activate the back body. And if this bothers your elbows, I mean your wrists, you can always come down to your elbows. Let's go for another five. I don't have a clock, so we're just playing by ear. Four, three, two, one. All right, drop down to your knees. Come to your hands and your knees here. Stack your hands directly underneath your shoulders. Stack your knees directly underneath your hips. This is spinal balance. It's really great to help uh, engage the, the posterior chain. That's all those muscles along the back body. We're going to extend the right leg out straight behind us. Use your left hand on your hips to make sure that they're square. And then lift the right leg. Only lift the right leg so high that you can keep your hips square and your belly in. Use your hands to check out to make sure you're not dumping. Do you see me dumping just there? That's not great. So belly's in, tailbone's down, foot is active. We're going to hang out here for another three, two. Don't lock those elbows. One. Nice. Now let's go out to the side, back in. That's one, side, two side three this is getting the glutes a little more side four let's do for eight side five side six side seven and eight nice now we're going to make this a little bit more abby i had to bring my hands forward just a bit we're going to bring that right knee to your right underarm or your right elbow your choice let's go for eight one two getting some abs Three, but guess what? The back's engaged the whole time. Five, six, belly's in, seven, and eight. Go ahead, extend it out for five more breaths. Five, belly's in, tailbone's down. Four, three, 
two, one. All right, set that right knee down, shake it out. You probably noticed that the balancing the, the knee on the ground, that glute was pretty sore. It's got to work to hold you steady. So let's extend that left leg back. Right hand's going to check into those hips. Make sure that they're square, tailbone down, belly's in, then lift that leg up. We're going to hang out here for five breaths like we did before. Now, again, if your wrists bother you, you can come up to your fingertips or you can come down here to your elbows. Yogi's choice. Also, another key is you can roll your mat up, put your wrists onto the mat and your fingertips off. Now we're going to go out to the side for eight. One, back, two, keep the belly in, three, try to keep the hips square, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Awesome. Let's do our little crunches over to the side. Elbow to the, the knee to that elbow or underarm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Extend it back for another five. Make sure you've got good form. Four, three, two, and one, go ahead, set the knee down. Maybe you move through a couple of rounds of cat-cow. You probably noticed that all of these are exercises, are asanas, poses that you do in a yoga class. That's why this is such an awesome practice. It's going to strengthen you. It's going to help to take some pressure off the low back, help reduce some back pain. Let's go straight into some core work. Coming over onto your belly. Let me move my microphone. We're going to plant both feet onto the mat. They're about hips width distance apart. Here's the thing. Boat pose can actually do damage if you don't do it right. If you round down a lot, that's putting a whole bunch of pressure down onto your pelvic floor, all of your belly muscles. It's not going to build the right muscles. So keep your back straight. Your chest is proud. Ladies, pretend Thor just walked in. That's what I like to joke about. Okay, keep those feet pressed into the mat and then come back to where it's like 60, 40. We're going to go for 20 of these. That's two. And this is hard. This is focusing straight up on the transverse abdominals. I think that was four. I'm a terrible counter. And remember, you want to keep your back straight. And you want to keep your feet pressed into the mat. You don't want to let them fall forward because then you start to use momentum. I really have no idea where I'm at. So I'm going to say this was 12. We're going to go for eight, seven, six five, four, three, two, and one. Now, go ahead, give yourself a little bit of a break, and we're going to build on to that. We're going to come into a boat pose. So your boat pose could be right here like we were doing. You can lift one leg or both legs and leave them at 90 degrees, or you can go towards straight. But at any time that you straighten or you link, extend out your legs or intensify this at all, if you round, that's not good. So back off to where you can keep your back straight. Now we're going to play with some bicycles. Left leg out, turn to the right. Right leg out, turn to the left. Let's do that for 10 each side. Here's two. That's three. Here's four. Remember, you can keep your legs down and just move the torso. I think that was five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Nice. Go ahead. Bring those knees into your chest. We're going to work towards getting to where you can do 25 each side. So 50 total. You don't have to do them today. I just want to show you the exercises. Okay. Let's do one more exercise. So we've done planks, locust pose, spinal balance with some spinal balance, a little bit of glute work. And now then we went into boat pose. Now we're going to come into the last ab exercise. This is a super great integrating pose or exercise rather to help you really engage the deep down core and it's going to connect the upper body to the lower body. So let's try it. We've got to lay down flat. So if you have to have your knees bent in order to lay down flat, that's okay. Go ahead and bend them. Tilt the tailbone down and get the belly button to spine. We're going to play with raising and lowering our legs with our backs all the way into the mat. Now, if you hear clicking or popping or anything like that, 
back off and let's re-engage. So we're going to start out. I'll leave my left leg, um, left foot pressed into the mat and bring my right leg up. We're going to raise and lower it for 10, but you have to keep the small of your back onto the mat. So let's go for it. Here's one. Keep the belly in. Two. This is very challenging. So that's three. If you can't go all the way down with keeping your low back on the mat, only go down as much as you can while you keep the low back on your mat. That's seven. Here's eight, nine, ten. Good job. Plant that right foot down. Let's lift the left leg up. Keep the belly in. Lower it down for one. Again, remember, only go down so much that you can keep the low back on the mat. If you want, you can raise the chest up. I'm not a huge fan of that one. It usually makes my neck fatigued. This is seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so last exercise. You can come back to this single leg, leg lifts, or the next progression is where you raise and lower both legs. This is really, really hard. So if you can't keep the whole low back on the mat, back off. Only do one at a time, or you don't lower the legs that much. You only lower them as long as you can keep your low back on the mat. So you may only go down maybe to like 20 degrees or 25 degrees. The goal is to get to the point where your whole back's on the mat and you come all the way down. So that's one. Let's go for 10. Two. Only go down as low as you can while you keep that whole back on the mat. That was three. We got Oh, how many more is that? <laughs> Four, six more. Can't do math while I'm trying to control my abs. Five, five more. Six. Seven, keep the back on the mat. Eight. Two more. Nine. And ten. Now, those are absolutely awesome at helping to build some stability, help connect the upper and lower. And for those of you that love to do inversions, that's going to help you to get everything together as you work on your forearm stand or handstand. Thank you so much for joining me today in this super quick tutorial on some drills that I do. I'm not kidding you, almost every single day to help to provide some stability and reduce pressure on my low back. You can have terrible diagnoses like a herniated disc. I've had it, um, but you don't have to live that way. There are things that you can do. Yoga can help with that. I love to say that. Yoga can help with that. Go to your edge. Don't go any further and only do it so far that you can keep the integrity. You, you notice that didn't take very long at all. This is not something where you have to dedicate two hours of your life. Not at all. In under 10 minutes, you can do a lot of stuff to help bring about some strength and stability. Okay. I say in under 10 minutes, but let's be real. The more that you do, the more active that you are, the more that you focus and engage these muscles, the more strength and stability you'll build for the spine. So don't just stop there. I understand if you're busy, get the 10 minutes in. That's better than nothing. But if you can, work for 30. Work for an hour. Give it as much time as you can because guess what? You're worth it. It. And don't forget, we offer classes every single day of the week here at Thrive Yoga and Wellness, and you are going to find these exercises that we did and so many more inside of all of our classes, except for maybe Yin and Restorative. Those are just to help you relax and to help to build some mobility. But if you're joining us in the Gentle, in the Level 1, in our Flows, our HIT classes, all of those cl classes incorporate asanas, poses like you saw me do today, that will help you to build some strength, have better posture, pro um, and most likely likely reduce some back pain. Thank you again so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in the studio again soon. Y'all go in peace. Namaste.